Uh, thanks, Isabel and Richard, for speaking to Tax Sutra. Could you quickly summarize the key takeaways from this fascinating session on future of uh, transfer pricing? Isabel? Thanks, Richard. Uh, thanks for uh, being invited to comment on this. Um, we have been talking about the issues in the present to then think about what future um, solutions could be. And, and first of all, if you think about solutions, you have to think about what the problems could be. And so we talked at length about BEPS. And the, the bottom line here is, is arm's length the future. And I have understood that also by um, sounding the public. We seem to be in a sort of agreement that arm's length principle seems to be the future and my personal observation is if we would think about alternatives we have to think about what the effect would be like formulary apportionment or what I as a European would call CCCTB common cooperated consolidated tax base uh, whether this would be a better or uh, a worse alternative but that not change for the sake of changing um, there's a bit of skepticism on the BEPS work being done by OECD with regards to transfer pricing. Why? What are the points that you have an issue with and what are the points you need? You think needs to be worked on? Well, I think, uh, first of all, I highly appreciate the work that the OECD has done, but the OECD has gotten a political mandate and uh, there has been uh, quite some political statements made about transfer pricing in the context of fairness and what have you, and I understand all that. But the OECD needs to work on a technical basis and come up with technical solutions to tackle a problem that basically goes back to uh, investor analysis sort of approaches. Can I have financial risk as the sole uh, determining element or do I also have to look at functionality? And this is where uh, Richard definitely will step in. So the OECD had to uh, come up with solutions that are not as comprehensive uh, as taxpayers uh, wish them to be, and I think that's the problem. In which areas? Specifically, if you could comment, which areas were you looking? Intangibles now seem to be a big, big grade. Well, the problem is ultimately, what is functional value creation? Do you need human interaction for value creation? The world of uh, digital economy, e-commerce, what is it going to bring? So I'm going to make a very provocative statement here. Is functional value creation in the future, if you look at artificial intelligence and all sorts of machines that can take over the work that uh, human beings have been doing for ages. Uh, Richard, I think you provided so many quotes, uh, uh, so many quotes uh, during the session, Dempy Dumps, you talked about <laughs> data being manipulable, <laughs> data being gamed, Richard, talk about some of them for the audience, please. Yeah, so the, the point I was trying to make, and, and Isabella and I may seem often to be in disagreement, but I think we're heading in the same direction, which is something that's practical, but something which has evolved from where we are now, because I don't think it's, it's sustainable at the moment. Um, so the, the points I was making was that uh, it's too information driven at the moment, and the information that it's being driven by is information which is very difficult for tax administrations to um, get at. But even taxpayers, if you said to someone at Google, why are you the dominant player in the internet market? I think some of them would say, we're not quite sure. It, you know, we had a good algorithm, but was that the whole explanation? I don't think it was. There's a, a first mover advantage. There are a whole lot of external reasons why firms become dominant. And I don't think current transfer pricing really takes that into account and in particular I refer today to the network effect. Google has a de facto monopoly which is unregulated. Uh, in the past we used to regulate monopolies and, and keep prices down and, and do stuff. Uh, now The European Commission is trying of course. Yeah, well <laughs> th they are but they're not, they're not trying to regulate the monopoly. They're trying to use tax as the regulating tool. There is an issue whether that's the right regulating tool but even if it is, then you've got to take account of the network effect, which is what's creating the monopoly. And you also made a statement, Richard, about risk uh, morphing into now, you know. Well, r risk is, is being, and intangibles are both being so broadly defined, although the OECD is trying to segregate them to some degree, that I think that they just are another word for functions to some degree, that, you know, that all we're talking about is functions. So why do we keep putting this emphasis on risk? Risk is important in some industries in a very big way. In other industries, it's not, not such uh, an issue. And to make it the cent centerpiece of transfer pricing, I, I, I think is uh, a mistaken paradigm. It's an important element. Um, 
I in the market, but it's not the only element. And that, that's the other point I was making. The, the OECD's functions assets risks is really incomplete as an analysis of value creation. And, and sort of with, with Isabel, you know, I think a lot more thinking needs to be done on what do we mean by value creation and, and what elements go into it and then use those elements to develop a workable tax system for transfer price. Quick concluding comments from both of you. Is it the next 24 uh, months, what does, uh, would you do some crystal ball gazing for our, for our audience? You did mention these are the, you know, this is a good time to be a, a YIN member and to consider a future in transfer price. Okay, well, I think the single most important thing that's going to be tackled from a technical and a political perspective is remote economic activity. How do we tax this. So um, Richard was referring to the Googles of this world, but the problem is very much broader. Uh, Richard is referring to a profitable company, but how many companies aren't out there that are simply focusing on growth rather than on making profits right now? So this is going to be important. The EU is going to look into that. The OECD is going to look into that. And also policymakers will need to look into that to see whether indeed those uh, large technology companies need to demerge. Uh, data as the new oil to quote the economist recently about that so that's going to be the most important work i think over the next 24 months yeah uh, richard i'm sure researchers are going to be very busy tp economists are going to be very busy over the next two years but uh, richard very quickly looking at the tp litigation landscape it's exploded you've had so many big judgments even from jurisdictions like like uh, india uh, you've seen the big judgments from australia and chevron and all uh, how is the tp litigation landscape likely to pan out over the next two years um, I think it's not going to grow in the way that some people suspect because it's so expensive. Chevron costs the ATO about $20 million in external expenses, just the ATO. Um, Chevron itself must have spent twice that amount. Um, so, you know, when you've got litigation um, which is costing those amounts of money, I think people will think twice. Chevron has already thought twice and has settled the case instead of carrying it to the next level, which would have blown away another 10 or 20 million uh, dollars. So uh, I think dispute resolution is going to be important, but just focusing on litigation is, is, is not getting a, a correct picture. But, but more generally, I think in the next 24 months, the big issue is going to be the digital economy. The fact that the G20 has advanced the next consideration of the issue was originally going to be in 2020. It's now in spring, northern spring 2018. And I think that's going to be where the developing countries really start to put the pressure on and say, well, let's go around transfer pricing. Let's come up with a, a virtual PE or some other tax and we'll just forget about transfer pricing. Um, so I, I think that's going to be, that's going to be the battleground where the issue about how do we allocate profits between uh, countries and com companies' profits between countries is going to be the next big issue and uh, so far at least it doesn't seem to be getting much airplay and uh, that surprises me because you know it, it, the OECD having decided only a year or two ago this is 2020 work it must be the developing country said no no it's now it's now work <laughs> Mm. And with the inclusive framework, the OECDs have to say, yes, it's now work. And I think that's going to be the battleground over the next period of time. Where these ideas, uh, battleground's not the right word, this is where these, these ideas are going to be next. The next real, turf war. The next real consideration of how do we solve these kinds of problems. Thanks so much, Richard. And it's a very good thing. You want to add something? Isabel? No, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, it was so a pleasure. Thanks, okay, thanks, so thanks very much.